We install this Ubiqu access point in this location and connect it to the code switch in the control room by using this fiber optic cable. The client needs to install several Ubiqu access points outside of a mall to provide the Wi-Fi coverage. It is an open area. The maximum distance from one location to the control room is about 400 meters. He ever considered the UTP cables. He wants to use the k 6 Ethernet cables to connect all these access points to a long-range PoE switch in the control room to build the network. As we know, the long-range PoE switch can push the PoE network up to 500 meters. But the speed is the challenge. The owner wants to have the high speed from the control room to each access point. What is the possible solution? It will be the fiber optic cable. As we know, the fiber optic cables can extend the network up to 10 km without degrading the speed. In this video, we are going to demonstrate how to use the fiber optic cables to connect these ubiquitous access points to a code switch in the control room to supply the Wi-Fi signal around the mall. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. You will receive the notification once we release a new video. Let's assume this is the location with the maximum distance to the control room, 400 meters. We are going to install this Ubiqu access point in this location and connect it to the code switch in the control room by using this fiber optic cable. This access point works with the PoE power over Ethernet. Either go through the standard PoE or passive PoE, but it doesn't work with the latest PoE standard, PoE++. Let me put this access point to the wall. We cannot connect this fiber optic cable to this access point directory. We need our first device, media converter. The media converter will convert the optical signal to the electrical signal or vice versa. There's two ports on one side. We have this PoE port. It's supposed to work with the access point and provide the PoE power to this access point. And this is the SAP slot, which is decided to work with the fiber optic cable, but it is empty. We need our another device called MIDI SAP transceiver. Let me put this SAP transceiver to this SAP slot. On the opposite side is the power input. It accepts the low voltage input between DC 24 volt and DC 56 volt. There's a voltage regulator built into this media converter. It will regulate the voltage to a standard PoE voltage and output through this Ethernet port. Let me put this media converter to the wall. We are going to connect our Ethernet port to this access point. In the practical setup, we are supposed to put this cable through this grind and the cat and use this wrench to fasten this grind and the cat to keep the water out of the product. This is cru crucial to install this outdoor media converter. But I have skipped this step to speed up the setup. Now let's connect this fiber optic cable to our um, SAP transceiver. We just need one strand to work with the media converter. We'll explain why one strand is enough. All right, now let's power up this media converter. This is the outdoor power supply unit. It output the DC 48 volt and there's 60 watt. Let's put on the power. Immediately we see the in power indicators on and it will take a while to see the link and 
Okay, now the in lint indicator is on also. The setup is pretty much ready at the edge. And we have this fiber optic cable. I want to talk about this fiber optic cable. This is the pre-made fiber optic cable. The connector is made in the factory. It is the single mode and LC type. There are two strands. And we can pull the fiber optic cable through the conduce directory. Since the connector is being made, I don't need to make the connector in the field. All right, let's move to the control room and see how we can set up the connection to work with this media converter. This is the setup in the control room. We have a terminated box working with the fiber optic cables from outside and we use this short patch code to pull the links from this fiber optic cable and connect it to our final device. Let's assume this is the router working with the ISP provider to supply the internet traffic. We need to distribute the network and send them to our access points at the edge. We need a switch. This is the fiber optical switch. It has 10 SRP slots. We got 8 on the left and 2 on the right. It can work with the 10 different locations and supply the internet traffic to all these access points. Let me power up this switch. Now I'm going to use this short patch code to connect one of the Ethernet ports to our router. So it will receive the Ethernet data traffic and we can distribute all this Ethernet traffic through this SAP slot and also this Ethernet port. This SAP slot is empty, just like the media converter. We need one more device called SAP transceiver. Let's put this SAP transceiver to one of the SAP slots and connect this short patch code from the terminated box to this SAP transceiver. Remember, we mentioned why we just need one cable to make the connection. Even the TCP IP network is the two-way communication. This SAP transceiver is the BD transceiver. It takes different wavelengths to transmit and receive the data. One strand can carry the two-way communication. Now we can see the indicators on, which means this SAP transceiver has established the network connectivity with the media converter at the edge. Now let me bring the computer to text the connection. I've connected this computer to our network switch. But there's no built-in REST server in the Ubiquiti access point. We cannot log in the REST server to verify the connection. Fortunately, Ubiquit provides the SSH connection. Now let's make the SSH connection to the access point. SSH and the username is UBNT. Default IP address is 192.168.1.20. The default password is also UBNT. Now we are in. Let's use a command to show the network connection, ifconfig. We are seeing the Wi-Fi 1, Wi-Fi 0, and also the network port with the IP address. We have established the connection from this computer to the access point at the edge through the fiber of the cable. The setup is done. But I'm not comfortable with this setup since there's no protection at the edge. We put the power source and connect to a media converter and the access point directory. I want to add the search protector to protect the access point. Now let's do it. This is an outdoor version terminated box. The search protector is built into this box. I will put this box before the whole setup. Inventory this made the fiber optic cable will go into this terminated box and we use a short patch code to link one fiber optical strand and connect it to our outdoor media converter. The AC power also will fit into this terminated box. We have an air brick. We can cut off the power if you want to maintain the system. This is the search protector. The search protector is connected to this air brick in parallel. If there is search coming from this AC electricity power, it will be attracted by this search protector first and released to the ground. This is the ground path. And then this is the clean output from this air brick. We will connect this output 
to our power supply unit so the power supply unit can get a clean power source let's move to the back this coupler will manage the pre-make the fiber optic cable the pre-make fiber optic cable will connect to this coupler and we use a short patch code to link one port and connect it to our media converter all right now let's put up this terminated box This is the whole setup. Let's recap what we have done. We connect this UV quick access point to this outdoor media converter and use an outdoor power supply unit to provide the low voltage power to power this access point. We also add this terminated box with the surge protector built in. Both pre-made fiber optic cable and the AC electricity power is going to this terminated box first. Then we got a clean power source power the whole system. In the control room, we have added the network switch with the 10 SFP slot. It can work with the access points from 10 different locations. All right, that's all for today's video. If you find it helpful, please give us a thumbs up if you have the algorithm to find the people who need this video. Thanks for watching.